Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to rescue a flight controller with a broken USB and as well as the traces that have been completely annihilated. Now I've gotten a bunch of flight controllers that have been broken uh, from many of my uh, subscribers and many of my viewers and as well as some of my friends, which is really nice. So we can actually start the uh, some of the series here for fixing this. So let's get started here. Now you might say, okay, why would I fix such a thing? Uh, if I'm not going to be able to put a USB back on it. Well, what you can do is enable one of the UARTs so you can uh, basically keep programming it from a separate UART later on with some kind of USB to serial adapter. And uh, if you were interested in one, I have one that I've created and designed and will be up on Banggood very soon. So these are going to be very useful. These do have this one. I call it the Swiss Army Knife of RC, you know, the hobby right here. And what this does is it does a lot of things. It actually allows you to play iBus, SBus on, on simulators. It also unbricks flight controllers, unbricks ESCs, flashes ESCs, flashes flight controllers, and um, it even you can even read the GPS output from you know the INEV GPSs, and it works with INEV. It works for everything. So we'll have this uh, later on. I'll have a separate video for this later on, show you how this works, and uh, it does a lot of things. And it does have SBus inversion for the simulators, and it's a uh, it's a really cool little project which I'll show you once it's in stock. All right, so the USB completely ripped off with the traces as you can tell right here. Now, how are you going to be able to connect a USB back to this? Well, one thing you might need, and I do highly recommend you pick up, are these little USB breakouts. I get them from Banggood. They're really useful and they can really help sometimes. For example, in this situation here. Now, you can also set up a connector where you can connect to this later on and you can just keep using the USB without a, without a USB to serial adapter. Now, let's take a look here. They're basically in the same order. We have ground, we have IO, we have D plus, D minus, and V bus. All we need is four wires, D plus, D minus, V bus, which is five volt and ground right here. Now you might say, okay, well, how do I know where to go from here? Now this, this is why I chose a very simple board. Uh, now for the protocol or the USB protocol to talk with the microcontroller unit, it needs on D plus and D minus a 22 ohm resistor. And it's what these two are right there. Usually they're very close to the USB area. Uh, here's another example right here. This is the Mamba. And uh, if you actually measure all of these uh, resistors, which are the black ones here, it'll read 22 ohms. So those two over there, the, the, where my finger is, those two resistors are the 22 ohm resistors for the D plus and the D minus for the Mamba, for example. So that's something to take note of. So that's how the data is going to be transferred. Now you might say, okay, well, the, the trace is ripped. How am I going to do that? Well, it's very simple because the traces go to these resistors. So we can just solder our D plus and our D minus to these and give 5 volt and ground. Now the 5 volt and ground is kind of tricky. The ground isn't really tricky. You can install the ground anywhere on the flight controller, but the 5 volt you have to install in a specific area. Why is that? Well, it depends on your flight controller and depends on the voltage it takes. The 5 volt, so if we were to take the 5 volt from the USB here, for example, which is this one, the V bus, and we were to install it right here, that would, could create a lot of problems or we could even short circuit something. So that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is look for the shot key diode. And this is the thing that allows, you know, the five volt that's from the USB and the five volt that's in the coming from the regulator on the board to not, you know, crisscross and then create some damage on the board, which usually looks something like this. It has three legs. Now, some, you know, some boards have way more than one and it's very difficult to figure it out. But I'm going to show you a really simple way to actually find this little uh, diode, which one it would be. Here we just have one, so it's really basic and really simple, just so you can get an idea. But I will be doing more advanced ones later on. So what we want to do first, we want to set up our multimeter into continuity mode. And we want to just hold one of the, one of the probes on the 5 volt. And we, if we have more than one, we could check each one of these. And you want to check the bottom legs, not the top one, the bottom ones. So as you can tell, oh, we have a beep. So this is 5 volt here. Do we have any beep here? No, we don't. So th this is now 50-50% chance that this is the one we're looking for. And how do we know for sure this is it? What you want to do is you want to go to the second leg and five the, find the 5 volt pad from the USB, which I know is all the way to the left here. And that's perfect. So that's that's awesome. So five volt from the USB goes to this pin. Five volt from the external whatever regulator goes to this pin. And what they do is they output the five volts here. Uh, the, one of them. So they don't you know short circuit here. One of them goes out to a 3.3 volt regulator to power up the microcontroller unit here. So this is how these things work. This needs 3.3 volts. So now we're gonna what we need to do. We need to find a ground pad, any ground pad. Let's bring this guy back in. This is a USB breakout. I'll have a link down below. It's very useful. You can get a bunch of them for really cheap. So we have our ground pad right here. So we're going to take this green wire and solder it to ground. D plus and D minus. 
what we're going to do is we're going to solve our D plus here, D minus right there on this side of the resistor. And then VBUS, we're going to install it right here, which is 5 volt, which is the 5 volt from uh, the USB, as you can tell right there. And that theoretically, we should have a connection to the PC. Let's get that started with. All right, so let's start with the easiest thing, which is going to be ground. So let's just take this green wire. I have it set as the green wire. And I'm just going to install it to the ground right there. So I'm bringing my soldering iron. All the grounds are connected, which is really nice. So that's one less thing to worry about here. This is a really, these are uh, returned flight controllers for that have been damaged and I just got a bunch of them. So that's really nice. All right, so we got our ground in place. Now let's go ahead and go for the D plus here. Now what's really nice about this is it has the correct order so it can help you know exactly so you don't have to keep guessing. So right now, we, if we take a look at the order, we see that this one is the D plus here. So let's go ahead and grab the D plus. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and set it up on this resistor. Okay. So now we have our D plus in. Now we need our D minus, which is the yellow wire right here. And we're going to install it to the other resistor. 22 ohm resistors. So just to double check if you didn't know. All right, so now we have the D plus and the D minus connected. All we need to do is to give the five volts, which we said was gonna go to the shot key diode here. So let's go ahead and uh, install this like so. It's gonna be very fragile. So and right now I'm doing it on camera, so it's not gonna be the best job ever. Okay, that's perfect. All right, so now theoretically, if we power this on, we should get the sound from the PC and I'm gonna go ahead and increase the sound from the PC as much as possible here. And um, let's go ahead and connect it. So let's zoom out here. And uh, theoretically this should boot up and make all these nice sounds for us. That's perfect. Um, that's it, now we can completely program it. Betafly actually recognizes it and everything's working perfect. You can tell from the sound. And it was just that easy. All right, guys, so I decided to take this a step further and explain to you how everything is working here. Now, what we were looking at right now is the open hardware F4 flight controller that I am developing, which I will release to the public and teach you how to create your own custom one and why things work the way they work. And this is a great way to show you why or how to find specific issues. So later on, you can apply that knowledge to any other flight controller, which is an F4 and F7s do kind of work also the same. All right, and before continuing, just a huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and also the open hardware flight controller videos, which if you have missed, you can go ahead and check the playlist down below, uh, which I'll be showing you how to create your own flight controllers. Now, PCBWay is a great place to have your PCBs manufactured. Not only do they have great customer support, they have awesome prices and they do have just about everything else you need. And currently, PCBWay is running an event for Christmas, so you can design a Christmas PCB and apply to have it sent for free to manufacture it and sent to you for free and uh, You can go ahead and share it with the world which is something really nice So if you're looking for a little project or you have a little project that you are creating you can go to PCB way and um, Apply for a free PCB, which is something pretty cool. All right So let's jump back to the flight controller here now as you can tell here This is the USB right there So this is where the USB was going and we saw we had V bus D plus D minus and the ground now, on every schematic, as you can tell here, it is a 22 ohm resistor. There, there, there shouldn't be any other 22 ohm resistor on the board. So you just get your multimeter, find the smallest resistors next to the USB, measure them. You'll most likely hit 22 ohm resistors, and they're most likely going to be in the correct order. Now, the shot key diode that we saw earlier, and, and let me explain it to you. Remember how it had three legs? So here's one leg, here's the second leg, and here's the third leg popping out right here. It's about 5.4C. Now, what we had is we had the 5 volt from the USB, and then we had a separate 5 volt from whatever the regulator or however the flight controller is handling the other 5 volt that's other than the USB. And what it does is it chooses one, it allows it go to the 3.3 volt regulator, which then is provided to the microcontroller unit here. So this is how these things works. It's very simple. One step at a time, you'll start understanding it, especially when I start on my series, which will explain all of this into further detail, help you design, customize, and design your own PCB and have it manufactured. So as you can tell here, that's all we were seeing on the board currently were the 22 ohm resistors. And what we did is we took the 5 volt from the USB and we gave it to the shot key diode and then we just gave ground, you know, because ground is common everywhere. We just gave the ground somewhere and we were able to 
do everything we wanted as you can tell here it's connected on pins 44 and 45 on the flight controller and um yeah it's just really that simple i mean it's not really complicated at all once you start understanding this then you can just about just figure out just about anything that's wrong with the flight controller which is something really nice here let's jump back to the table and continue from there all right guys so that's how you figure out or that's how you set fix a broken usb here now there's also other methods we can do which i'll leave for a later video this is just a basic one just to kind of get an idea of how to go about fixing it for example later on we have this little one this one's going to be a bit more complicated for example it does have basically almost everything removed from the cicada or kikada uh all on flight control with, with escs built in so yeah we'll take we're going to be taking a look at this in a later video and um if you guys do like this content if you want to see more of this content please consider joining my patreon that'll go an absolute long way also use the links down below those greatly support the channel and like always i'll see you in the next one peace out